Russia's losses in Ukraine during offensives on the Eastern Front have exceeded 600,000 personnel killed and wounded, the Pentagon said on condition of anonymity during a briefing for journalists' political reports. It is noted that the estimate of the casualties more than 40 times Russia's losses during its decade-long invasion of Afghanistan in the 1990s is in line with previous Ukrainian estimates but tells only part of the story. The publication emphasized that over the past few months, Russian troops have captured several key cities that the Ukrainians stubbornly held. Politico says that the Russian offensives since the summer have consisted of massive artillery attacks, followed by large troop movements rushing headlong toward well-entrenched Ukrainian positions, resulting in thousands of casualties as Moscow's commanders seem to have decided on a strategy of trading bodies for ground. Russian gains have been the most sustained and significant since its initial invasion in February 2022, and Moscow appears to be betting that casualties are sustainable, at least in the short term. They have attempted to overcome Ukrainian fires with massive maneuver, a military official said. If you look at the salient around Pokrovsk, the number of Russian forces there is astounding. It's tens of thousands of forces that they've put into that very small area. As you know, when you have that many forces in a very small area, it's a target-rich environment. For the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian government has rushed troops to fill gaps in their front lines but have continued to fall back since the summer, unable to fully counter the Russian assaults. Russian troops are now approaching the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region of Donbass, the fall of which would be a serious blow to Ukrainian forces. Politico added, Russia sent a staggering number of troops to Pokrovsk, a relatively small area, according to one military official, confirming its bloody strategy. President Volodymyr Zelensky has been shopping his plan for victory to leaders in Washington and Europe, but has managed to generate little enthusiasm for its key tenets, more weapons and the lifting of restrictions by the US, UK and Germany to allow their long-range weapons to be used deep inside Russia, where Kyiv sees fit. The elite 47th Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, which spent 15 months continuously fighting in many of the bloodiest battles with the Russians in the East and went into a well-deserved rest and recharge in early September, may have the most sophisticated American Abrams tanks. The unit's lone tank battalion was equipped with the American-made M1A1 Situational Awareness Abrams from the 2000s, which are not the most protected, but the Ukrainian vehicles may be the most modified, Forbes writes, citing a video in which the 47th Brigade showed off surviving vehicles during exercises, the 69-ton, four-seater M1s sport American-made reactive armor blocks on their sides and Ukrainian-made reactive armor blocks on their turrets as locally-made slat armor against drone and drone grounding jammers. Journalists noted that the improvements are designed to combat two main threats, anti-tank missiles and explosive drones. Reactive armor explodes outward, deflecting missile warheads. Cellular armor and a suppressor disable and block explosive drones. The article emphasizes, it is not known how many Abrams tanks the 47th Brigade had left after the fighting. At most, the 47th Mechanized Brigade has 25 M1s left. At a minimum, it might have just 17, but it's a safe bet all the survivors now have the add-on armor and jammers. They'll roll back into battle, better protected than ever, potentially delaying the day when the brigade has too few tanks to form a cohesive fighting force. If the 47th Mechanized Brigade gets more Abrams, they might not come from the United States, but from Australia. While the Americans haven't signaled a willingness to transfer more tanks, the Australians are reportedly considering donating 59 surplus M1A1SAs that recently retired from the Australian Army. With 59 fresh Abrams, the 47th Mechanized could replenish its existing tank battalion and possibly form a second battalion too. Unless and until that happens, those 14 to 25 survivors of the original 31 Ukrainian M1s will have to soldier on alone, Forbes said. According to Oryx analysts, six such tanks were destroyed and eight were damaged or abandoned.
It is strange that the United States has not sent an M1 replacement. Those first 31 Abrams that arrived in Ukraine a year ago are the only Abrams that the Americans have promised, despite the fact that there are literally thousands of tanks in storage in the United States, the article says. The Russians lost at least five divisions of armored vehicles and tanks in the Pokrovsk direction over the course of a year, according to a report by the Institute for the Study of War. On October the 4th, User X, who tracks visually confirmed losses of Russian equipment and hardware in Ukraine, confirmed that Russian forces have lost 1,830 pieces of heavy equipment in the Pokrovsk district since October the 9th, 2023. During offensive operations in the Pokrovsk district, Russian forces lost a total of 539 tanks and 1,020 infantry fighting vehicles, while Ukrainian forces destroyed 381 tanks and 835 armored vehicles, the report says. In addition, according to his data, Russian troops also lost 26 infantry vehicles, 22 multiple launch rocket systems, 11 towed artillery systems, and 92 unarmored trucks. Moreover, since September the 6th, 2024, Russian troops have lost 25 tanks and 59 armored vehicles in the Pokrovsk district. At the same time, ISW analysts note that since not all losses of Russian equipment are visually documented, the actual number of losses of Russian equipment in the Pokrovsk area is probably much higher. Since October 2023, Russian forces have advanced only 40 kilometers in the Avdiivka Pokrovsky operational direction, and the loss of more than five divisions of equipment for the sake of such tactical successes cannot continue indefinitely without fundamental changes in Russia's ability to resource its war. As the ISW notes in the long term, Russia will likely find it difficult to adequately supply its units with military equipment without putting the Russian economy on a war footing and significantly increasing the pace of defense industrial production, something that Russian President Vladimir Putin has tried to avoid so far. Experts say that seizure of Volodar serves as a warning as Ukrainian forces brace for a battle for the highway and rail hub of Pokrovsk regarded by Moscow as vital for incorporating all of the Donetsk Oblast, the city of Pokrovsk possesses important industrial facilities and its seizure would severely disrupt Ukrainian supply lines along the Eastern Front as well as evacuations of wounded soldiers. If we lose Pokrovsk, the entire front line will crumble, Ukrainian military expert Mikhailo Zyrokov recently warned. The Russian forces have destroyed approximately 80% of critical infrastructure in Pokrovsk. The population of Pokrovsk has significantly decreased, with only 13,050 residents remaining, compared to over 48,000 just six weeks ago. Ukrainian officials continue to implement an evacuation plan that has been ongoing for several weeks.